Today on Zy Guys, Elephant Toothpaste. Welcome to Sci Guys. I'm Ryan. And I'm Mark. And on today's episode, we'll be making elephant toothpaste. This is the biggest toothbrush I could find, but hopefully it'll work. For what? <coughs> Do you ever know what we're actually doing? A catalyst is any substance that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction without actually being consumed in that reaction. The catalyst in today's experiment is an enzyme called catalase, which is produced by the yeast. The equipment and ingredients you're going to need for this episode includes a beaker or two liter bottle to house your reaction in. Some hydrogen peroxide, preferably 6%, but 3% will still work. Dish soap, Dawn works the best. Some dry yeast. Food coloring is optional. A funnel to get all our products into the bottle. A bowl to make your yeast mixture in. And a pan to catch our reaction product. The safety equipment we recommend for this experiment include gloves, goggles, and an apron or lab coat to protect from spills and splashes. Also, please keep in mind this reaction is exothermic, so it does produce a little bit of heat, and our younger viewers might want to get their parents' help. The first step in our experiment will be to dissolve the yeast in some warm water. All we're going to do is take one teaspoon of our dry yeast, put it in a mixing bowl, and to that we're going to add two tablespoons of very warm water. And then we just mix until it's completely dissolved. While our yeast is activating, take your beaker and place it in the center of your tray. Add one half cup of hydrogen peroxide into your beaker. Then add a few drops of food coloring. And a squirt of dish soap. Use a spoon to mix it all together. The final step in our experiment is to simply add our activated yeast to our colored hydrogen peroxide solution. In the first test of our experiment, we're adding the activated yeast to a solution of 3% hydrogen peroxide. As you can see, when we mix the hydrogen peroxide with the yeast, a steady production of hot foam is produced. Let's try that one more time. This time we'll be adding the yeast to a solution of 12% hydrogen peroxide. As you can see, a lot of hot foam is still produced, but this time, the reaction occurs much quicker. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. A hydrogen peroxide molecule looks like this. The solution you buy in the store also contains lots of water molecules. The higher the concentration listed on the bottle, the more hydrogen peroxide molecules and the fewer water molecules it will contain. Hydrogen peroxide is a relatively unstable compound, and it breaks down on its own into water and oxygen, given a little bit of time. The equation of the balance decomposition of this reaction looks like this. As we stated earlier, a catalyst is anything that helps facilitate or accelerate a chemical reaction but is not consumed in that reaction. The yeast in our experiment produces an enzyme called catalase, which acts as the catalyst in our reaction. When we mix the yeast into our hydrogen peroxide, the catalase from our yeast rapidly breaks one of the oxygen atoms off of each hydrogen peroxide molecule. This leaves us with one oxygen atom and a water molecule for each hydrogen peroxide molecule. Oxygen atoms don't like to be by themselves, so they attach to another fellow oxygen atom, creating O2 gas, which floats out of our solution. When the bonds of a molecule are broken in this fashion, energy is released, usually in the form of heat. Normally, the slow breakdown of hydrogen peroxide into water and O2 gas doesn't create a noticeable change in temperature, but because we used a catalyst to increase the rate at which hydrogen peroxide breaks down, we also increase the rate at which energy is released. The rapid release of energy causes a dramatic increase in our solution's temperature, making it exothermic. The large number of escaping oxygen bubbles that are produced from the catalyzed breakdown of hydrogen peroxide become trapped in the dish soap, producing large amounts of hot foam, also known as elephant toothpaste. Well, that's it for elephant toothpaste. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments below and subscribe for future episodes. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to this episode, or about science in general, let us know in the comments below or message us on Facebook and we'll try to help you out as best possible. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.
Here at SciGuys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, share a video or photo of them with us on our Facebook or Google Plus page. But remember to always ask your parents' permission before you share any photos or videos.